For a good time, try typing www.collegehumor.com into your web browser's window. You'll find an endless stream of short videos that will do anything from brighten your day to cause you to hurt yourself from laughing too hard. Now, I love a good laugh, and websites have become really expert at providing humor in easily digestible bites that we can share with friends and family at the push of a button. Humor is what puts the viral in video. Joining me today are collegehumor.com writer-comedians Amir Blumenfeld and Streeter Seidel. They came to my attention in a recent Wired Magazine feature by Jason Tans on hoaxes. The pair is world-renowned for pulling elaborate pranks on one another. I'm hoping to learn a little about their site and what makes a good stunt today. That and how they haven't killed each other in the process of getting revenge. Amir and Streeter, welcome to Mr. Media. Hey, how you doing? Thank you very much for having us. Great. Uh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Hey, uh, uh, the Wired story was probably written about three or four months ago, so what horrible stunts have you two pulled on each other since then? <laughs> <laughs> nothing uh, Nothing yet. It's not my turn, nothing. though, you know? Nothing that I know of. <laughs> not my turn. Please tell me you're not such gentlemen that you let each other take, that you take turns with each other. I feel like uh, we do. do. I, th- I think it's it's unfair to just keep if I just kept getting a mirror over and over without giving him a chance to get back it seems too mean well how did all this start between the two of you uh um, it started do you want to take that one Amir well the first prank was yours right yeah I guess I'll give you okay I'll take it then um <laughs> It started very, very innocently and small. Uh, we we work in an office with mostly young people. It's a very permissive environment. And uh, Amir was just being annoying, Al- always being annoying. We shared an office, so I always had to listen to him. And he was, like, singing along to songs on my iTunes, and it was just driving me crazy. So I just modified one and uh, caught his reaction as he listened to it, very small prank, nothing, uh, nothing crazy. And then it started from there and then it just kind of snowballed. He got me back a little bit bigger. I knew I had to do something a little bit bigger to get him back. And, uh, and here we are a couple of years now, later. And you say that you modified, what are we, what are we, what are we talking about? <laughs> I, uh, I inserted some, uh, taste, less tasteful audio snippet into uh, the song Stacy's Mom and just recorded him <laughs> listening to it. It was a sex tape. Just go out and say it. <laughs> it was a little... It was, yes. That's what it was. <laughs> we we don't have a Department of Broadcast Standards here, so you guys can uh, describe oh, things wonderful. As, as, they, as they are. Okay. Uh, so, little, little sexy stuff, huh? Yeah. yeah, a little bit of that. that. And how did, before we find out, uh, Amir, how you uh, re- responded in kind, how did, how did they, you actually discover that he had pranked you? Um, I mean, I was listening to it and I heard it. So, and then she just started laughing and I, you know, I ah. assumed I put, I put two and two together. <laughs> I got it. All right. It was and four. Then, <laughs> and then you turned the tables on him. What did you do to him? Uh, the revenge from that one was setting him up on a fake date with a woman that didn't actually exist and uh, sort of videotaping his reaction as he waited and waited for her and bought her lunch. I didn't buy her lunch. I bought her... <laughs> I got a cookie. Oh, uh, yeah. He bought her, I guess, a very light lunch. Yes. I would have bought her lunch if she had showed up, though. <laughs> And when did it become um, a, a pattern? I mean, when did, you know, I mean, did you guys consciously decide, hey, this is a, you know, there's something to this, the, the, you know, Amir and Street are pranking each other? Or did the, did the company, how did that, how did it become, you know, material for everybody? What was the first one to really, because we were just doing this to each other for fun and the enjoyment of our friends. Um, and, you know, there was, like, yeah, a couple of people would watch him, but it wasn't really big until... What was the first one that really, like, everyone kind of noticed? Maybe the stand-up comedy one? 
Yeah, I think that was the first one that probably like a lot of it, when it became a thing uh, was when I had gone. I was doing a stand-up show, and uh, Amir had told he had told the audience not to laugh at me and to heckle me. It was <laughs> <laughs> it was a horrible experience. I really can't even watch that one. Uh, to this day, that was like two years ago or something, and I, I can't watch it. It's too painful. But yeah, that one that one got bigger than all the other ones, and then uh, it sort of became a thing, you know, where people were expecting us to get each other back. And was anybody keeping score literally on this, uh, either online or between? The, is it just between the two of you? Or? <laughs> I guess there's no score, just alternating. So I guess I guess the score now is four I'm up. Three. I'm up. Yeah, I feel like I'll never take the lead. Always tie him. <laughs> it's. I mean, there are like people in the comments of each one who will, you know, declare a winner, but. Uh, I don't. Mean, pretty much, pretty much. This is. There's no way either Amir or I could win. It's both of us are going to lose in the end. <laughs> are, are the pranks generally, you know, harmless in the big picture, or have there been any that, you know, have had some l- longer lasting impact? Oh, I don't know, Amir. Care to feel that one? Well, there was one where Streeter went to a baseball game with his girlfriend, and I put a marriage proposal on the jumbotron from him to her, and neither of them knew about it. Um, she said yes, and she said no, and then she ended up slapping him. And they broke up, but he claims that it's not because of that prank. It wasn't. No. It was not because of that prank. We broke up a say year and a half later. Perhaps the seeds of doubt were sown that night. I'll say the <laughs> prank The prank did uh, spur a discussion I didn't want to have, but... There we go. <laughs> that, I thought that one was a little too mean. Because it was mean to her. It was mean to her. It wasn't like, it's okay, you can be mean to me, but she was innocent. You got an outsider. Yeah. Well, that, that I'm glad you mentioned that one. That feeds in well to this. I, I have a clip. <laughs> this is uh, just the opening minutes, not the entire prank, but this is the opening minutes to uh, what followed that proposal. This is uh, Streeter uh, pranking Amir at a basketball game. And uh, I want to play this just the first couple minutes, and then uh, hopefully we'll get some good play-by-play afterwards from you guys. <laughs> so give a listen to this, folks. Hey, everyone. My name is Streeter from collegehumor.com. Uh, last time you saw me, if you're not a College Humor fan, was probably when I was being pranked at Yankee Stadium by my friend Amir. <laughs> You know how at halftime at basketball games, one lucky fan is always dragged out on court, is given the opportunity to take some impossible shot to win a ton of money? Well, what if that fan were a mirror? What if he made that shot and it was worth half a million dollars? And what if we saw him be told it was all fake seconds later and be embarrassed in front of 18,000 people? Wouldn't that be fun? I think that'd be fun. All access. Look at that. And in case you guys are wondering how I could afford to do something like this, uh, I didn't. What happened was Kate in our ad sales department thought this idea was funny uh, and decided to make some money available. So Axe Body Wash, you don't know it yet, but you just made a very large donation to the University of Maryland Scholarship Fund. You're very generous, and they thank you for it. So guys, I just got word that Amir is in his seat. He's sitting next to a mutual friend of ours, Neil Janowitz. Now, Neil's my accomplice and uh, invited Amir down. Neil's an ESPN writer who said he had to cover this game for the magazine. And to get Amir to come with him is a little added incentive. He promised Amir he was going to rig it so that he would get picked to take this half-court shot.
How you feeling? It's a lot of money. It's five hundred thousand dollars. That's why we got insurance. Is that, <laughs> that a picture or video? That was a video. Yeah. <laughs> you look good though. <laughs> In a couple minutes, he's going to come out here and try to make a blindfolded half court shot for half a million dollars. So whether or not that ball goes in, I need you guys to scream and cheer and get it out. I know you can be here and I want to run the whole game. Please, 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 help me. Uh, and I will never take this picture off, I promise. Now, Folks, it, it may lose a little something in the translation from video to audio, but it is really, really funny. Uh, Streeter, uh, how on? This is a pretty elaborate prank. How did you pull this off? Oh man, uh, it, it was extremely elaborate. Um, there were a lot of moving pieces. I enlisted the help of our production department at the website. Um, one of them, uh, one of the producers, had gone to the University of Maryland, had knew some people there. So she got in touch with them uh, and asked if they'd be game. They said they would, but we would need some money. So as I said in the video, I got some money from one of our ad deals, made a very large donation to their scholarship fund, and they were, they were pretty game. They were like, all right, half time's yours. Uh, and then from there, it was just a matter of calling our friend Neil, who's a, a buddy of ours, and, and setting the wheels in motion. And then just and praying, it, praying, praying that uh, the audience would scream and cheer when he took the shot. <laughs> and this is it, folks. In case you missed it in, in, in the audio, uh, uh, Amir was set up to, bring, to come out uh, at halftime and shoot half-court, $500,000 blindfold shot, if he made it, he'd win five hundred thousand dollars, and uh, that's kind of where the audio ends. Now, Amir, you're backstage. You've been picked from the audience. You know this is coming. You you go to the game for this reason. What's going through your head at this point? Um, I guess I, my, well, my my strategy was to throw it as hard as I could so that I didn't look really weak, and uh, you know, my goal was to hit the backboard. <laughs> And there's been a <laughs> he's listening to Streeter is laughing. There's been a uh, at this point there's been kind of a pause in the running prank war. I mean there's been a break, so you have no reason to think that your friend Streeter has pulled this on you. Yeah, exactly. I mean I've done a lot of crazier stuff in the last eighteen months between the last prank war and this one that like my guards are completely down at this. You know that? I'll like, I'll jump in. That's the thing about these pranks, everyone's like, oh, aren't you always on guard? Aren't you on guard? And like, yes, you are, but uh, just the nature of our jobs is such that we're always doing stuff like this. Like, we're always doing kind of crazy things, we're like flying here, going to do this show. So you can't really say no to all that stuff. You just kind of have to go with it and, <laughs> and like, hope for the best, you know? Uh, anyway, just want to, just want to jump in with that. Now, and folks, if you want to see this in, in its entirety, and it's, I think it's about a seven-minute clip, uh, go to collegehumor.com. It's college humor. For you Canadians, it's H-U-M-O-R.com. <laughs> and and uh, in the search box, search Prank War 7. Prank War 7, the number 7. And uh, right. it'll bring up the half-million-dollar shot. Um, Amir, what are some of the, the keys to being a successful prankster? <laughs> Is that what I am? <laughs> well, <laughs> you're on this um, show talking about it. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you credit. Sure. <laughs> okay. I didn't know that it was my profession. All right. What did you say? Successful. <laughs> successful. I didn't say professional. <laughs> okay. Thank God. <laughs> uh, I guess uh, originality. You uh, want to. You want to show people something that they've maybe never seen before. Um. I try not to physically hurt Streeter, just to go for strong emotional bonds and attachments he has, like to stand-up comedy or his girlfriend, stuff like that. <laughs> um, use your resources, whatever you know. Make, make calls, make connections, talk to people. Like my friend Pete, who hosted the stand-up comedy show, I knew that that would be one way of um, getting to Streeter. I, I, I don't host a comedy show, but I know people who do, so that that, that was helpful mm -hmm. um yeah i don't know what do you think i think you know the i think knowing knowing your enemy 
is the best uh, is is the best helper for a prank. Like if your friends your enemies bless there. <laughs> it's true. If you look at like the pranks that I've done on Amir, a lot of them play into Amir's uh, deep, deep desire to be famous, uh, respected comic actor, <laughs> and just exploiting that wish. You know, I think you know when you know someone wants something so bad that they'll be they'll be able to you'll be able to get them to sort of play into your scheme a lot easier. Know what they want, give it to them, and then take it away. And then snatch it back, yes. <laughs> That's good. For example, That's I want good. half I like a million dollars. <laughs> right, Amir, Amir also desperately wants money. It's weird. I have this weird thing where I want money. And yeah, Peter so knew that odd. because we're so close. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, okay, and I wanted to ask you about that. Are you guys close, or is it is it a genuine office competition? You know, is it like... Is it like uh, uh, Jim and Dwight on The Office. Uh, what, what, what are we talking about here? Peter's Dwight. What? I'm clearly Jim. <laughs> clearly. Peter and I are buddies. Yeah, I mean, everyone, every, everyone there, and it's pretty like much everybody at work is, yeah, it's like working with all your uh, best friends. So it's, you know, it makes it a lot easier to forgive as well. <laughs> Well, and let's talk. Let's talk about the site in general. Uh, tell us a, a little about collegehumor.com. How does how does material get on there? Is you know, can anyone submit to it, or is it is it a, a screening process? Yeah, there's oh. a. I mean, we do we do a lot of things on the website. We um, we have pictures, videos, articles, links. Um, anyone can submit a video or a picture or an article, and we go through all of that um, and find the best stuff. And then we also produce our own stuff. We write our own articles, make our own videos, and increasingly it's becoming more of like uh, more original stuff and, and less just you know found online stuff. But for the time being, it's about half and half. Hmm. Uh, what would be uh, uh, an example of a video that works really well for CollegeHumor.com? The prank war, I guess. <laughs> yeah, those tend to do pretty well. Um, I don't know. Some of our, what, what's our what's our best uh, original? You think the most successful one? Our best original video? Yeah. Um, gosh, I don't know. We've had lots of successful viral vids. Um, we did one recently where Dan, one of our coworkers, um, walks around shouting stuff, and he calls it a real life Twitter account. So he just walks <laughs> around shouting stuff as you would on Twitter. <laughs> you know, just, like just random garbage, just spewing random garbage around New York. That was a pretty successful that was, one. Yeah, that was really funny. <laughs> we had a Mario and Princess sex tape that was leaked. That was pretty successful. I mean, it's like it's it's hard to say like this is the one thing that works online, you know, because there's just so much, and then sometimes. There'll be some massive hit just out of the blue, some weird little video that for some reason everybody who sees it will just instantly find hysterical and send it around. Like uh, a baby dancing to single ladies. Right. Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> but there, there's, uh, there's certainly no formula for how to do it. If there were, uh, we would be filthy, filthy rich. Well, what Which I am. What? What doesn't we? What you didn't get that five hundred thousand? Oops, I didn't give that away. What, uh, what doesn't work on the site? You know, when you get submissions from outside, what you know, what doesn't work consistently? Um, uh, long, long, long videos, uh, like really alternative, absurdist comedy. It has to be a little more middle of the road. And then just, and if you're talking like broad comedy, uh, just like your standard guy falling down video it's just not enough anymore you know maybe like five six years ago that would that would have been fine but there's so much of that now that's got to have some sort of twist you know We've no one's going to watch a guy fall down the stairs it's gonna be like guy fall down stairs and then pukes at the end there's got to be some sort of kicker on the uh, america's funny song videos i think the, the the sense i've always had there has been on that type of stuff is that uh, you know they show people 
seemingly getting hurt and you know you know the the the, the little the little kid swings the baseball bat and hits the guy in the nuts that kind of thing but generally they they they, they seem to assure you that no one was actually seriously hurt in this you know when the car went over the cliff the guy lived <laughs> yeah he's okay the uh, thumbs up <laughs> we don't uh, i mean generally we won't post something where people we should die or <laughs> no, I mean nobody. Look, nobody wants to see someone actually get seriously sick. Like we'll post someone breaking their leg or something, but uh, I think everyone gets a little turned off when there's like a very serious consequence to one of those silly fall down videos. And does there have to be a college element to collegehumor.com? No, not really. You know, it started that way. It started very much. Uh, about college and, and very college centric, but uh, as the years go by, and you know, people, the people who read the site in college continue to come to the site now, and some of those people are in their late twenties. So the content has sort of uh, expanded to just what's funny to everybody. Uh, we still do, you know, for college kids, but we we'll also do stuff for or kids or, you know, people in their mid to late twenties. I don't think we're really hitting the thirties market yet, but maybe. Maybe in a couple of years. Well I kinda of wondered if, if if there needed to be an expiration date on the people who worked at a site called collegehumor.com. <laughs> I sure hope not. Yeah. Well Amir <laughs> and I are both in our we're approaching our late twenties, so that would we're be pushing, uh whatever it is, we're pushing it. Yeah, we're pushing it big time. Twenty twenty seven and a half you get fired. <laughs> now I'm curious about something. I, I wasn't really clear from what I read. Uh, were you guys involved in the founding of the site, or do you work at the site? No, we just work there. We we have we've been working there for close to five years now. Um, but uh, no, we were not involved in the founding of it. Ah, okay. So no, no, no. You, you don't stand to directly benefit should it become. Huge. So, Amir, you've got to keep looking. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what makes – tell me about the other person. Uh, Amir, what makes Streeter funny? Streeter, what makes Amir funny? Uh, Streeter is just, you know, this cool big guy, and he uh, sometimes says funny stuff, sometimes not, and uh, we love him. Oh, my God, listen to you, dude. Uh, Listen to you. He can't even give me a compliment. Listen to this guy. He's a big, funny guy who says uh, funny things. Amir's a skinny – he's a skinny guy with glasses who says funny things sometimes. He does the he does this one thing where he eats like two Jello cups in a row and it's just like that, people... I was not that wasn't I wasn't even trying to be funny man I had to eat lunch quick. <laughs> <laughs> Amir, I'll tell you, is... I'll tell you, most of Amir's jokes are puns. They're mostly puns, yeah, but he's a, like a lot, a lot of wordplay. He, he's not like a sniper with his puns. He's no he's no like a Mark Twain. You know he's like a machine gunner who just sprays them out all day. Like every, every minute there's a pun coming out, but you know, a ve- one, one in 30 is going to be good. Yeah. It's called the Blumenfeld formula. <laughs> <laughs> as long as 3.3% of your puns land, it's worth it in the long, it's worth it in the long pun. And, oh uh, Jesus. See, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, it's, I'm listening to you guys, and I it take. I mean, I'm I'm along past uh, my 20s, but it, it takes me back to you know the way we would interact with you know guys I went to college with, guys at that age where you didn't really have, you know, you weren't married, you didn't have kids, you didn't have a mortgage, you didn't have the same responsibility, and everything was more grain of salt, and things were much funnier then, I think. And, and oh, you're no, married friend. with a child. You're depressing um, me, man. Yeah, I'm sorry, Amir. I should have said yeah, that. Yeah, what the hell? You got your alimony, and I haven't smiled in six weeks. Do you know what that <laughs> feels like not to smile in six weeks? Uh, I, I've been married 20, well, a long time. Yes, I do know what it's like. <laughs> you might be married longer than Amir and I have been alive. 
<laughs> oh, now, now who's depressing who, guys? <laughs> you um, bum me out. Now I'm going to bum you out. <laughs> Do you guys have any uh, comedy video heroes, uh, either people that we would know or that we wouldn't? I think um, we both love uh, Ricky Gervais quite a bit. And in terms of, like, internet videos? Oh, those people? Yeah. Those losers? Anything, yeah. <laughs> I used to look up to, I guess I still look up to the Lonely Island guys. Yeah, they're still um, doing it. I mean, it's on yeah. SNL now, but it's still just as funny. I used to watch their videos online in, like, like eight, ten years ago, and I thought they were so funny, and then they got their gig on SNL, and they're still being just as funny as they were on the internet. So I am in awe. I am in... I am in reverence of their success and humor. I think you mean you're jealous. Yeah, I'm very <laughs> jealous too. <laughs> well, um, that, that, that this this one went by really fast, folks. Listen, you can uh, you can watch all kinds of funny videos at collegehumor.com. Yeah, take the time Including, that you wouldn't spend would have spent listening to us and just start watching videos on College Humor. There you go. There you go. Simple as that. Listening to. Listen to the two of them. Still come back and listen to me again. Um, <laughs> well, you know, please, we don't want to work just, we're trying to build an audience here. This guy's just going to bum you out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, check out the shorts, especially featuring Amir Blumenfeld and Streeter Seidel. And uh, oh, Amir and Streeter, uh, it's, been, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I, uh, I suspected when I saw the story on Wired that you guys would be fun guests, and I appreciate that you were. And uh, oh. thanks, uh, you know, thanks so much for joining us on Mr. Media today. Thank no you problem. very much for having us. <laughs> Good luck to you both. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck to yourself. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. And, folks, for more interviews with uh, web TV personalities, you can surf over to our main website, www.mrmedia.com. That's where you can listen to my earlier conversations with stars and producers of Whatever Hollywood, it's okay, I'm an actor, and much more. And please think about writing an online review of Mr. Media, casting a vote for Mr. Media, or marking Mr. Media as one of your favorites, whether you listen on Blog Talk Radio, blogcritics.org, True Slant, Pointer Online, Digital Journal, Vox, Mediafly, Podfeed.net, Blueberry, Zencast, Zimbio, Current, or Odeo. Subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. Or subscribe to Mr. Media's blog on the Amazon Kindle Reader. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman.com. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash andelman. Thanks so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you sharing a piece of your day with Mr. Media. Thanks for listening.